Hey, good afternoon, laddie. I know what you're probably wondering. Brennan, what's this video about? You should have read the title. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Today, we're reviewing the five greatest films of all time ever put to film in the world. That's right, it's the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. I happen to own the entire series on Blu-ray, DVD, and VHS. Technically, only the first one came out on VHS, but that still counts. I have been a huge fan of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise since day one, since they first came out. And so I finally decided to watch them last week, and they're really good films, it turns out. We're gonna take a look at all five of them. We're just gonna talk about why these are literally the greatest movies that anybody has ever made or seen. These are so good. Let's start with the first film in the franchise, which was Pirates of the Caribbean 4, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. It featured Johnny Depp in his breakout role as Edward Scissorhands, Orlando Bloom, and Kiara Knightley. They were basically the main characters. This was also the last film where we saw Jeffrey Rush star as Barbosa. It was the first film that starred him as Barbosa as well. That makes this one probably Probably one of the greatest films ever made. My one criticism with this film, not a lot of realism. It didn't seem like it was based in reality. There was a lot of fiction in it, which I didn't really care for because I'm kind of a historical person having been alive for most of the important historical events of my lifetime. So yeah, this one gets a one star out of five. Now let's move on to the second film in the trilogy of five movies. The second film was of course, Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Now the weird thing about this movie was that they didn't go to the end of the world in this one, they went to the beginning of the world. So I think that they actually were on the wrong side and maybe they, the film crew just, they realized, but they thought, eh, we've already spent so much of our budget on getting here. It should have been called At World's Beginning, technically. This film actually Actually doesn't have any of the characters from the first one. This film, unlike the first one, was very realistic, okay? They had zombie sharks in this one and fish people. Like, I'm like, finally, this film was five hours long. I fell asleep through the entire thing. And for that, it gets a one star. And now the third one is the one that gets the most hate from everybody. Everybody claims that the third one is not good. And they're wrong about that. And I'll tell you why. It's because this is the greatest film franchise of all time and every single one of these films is perfection. The third film was of course, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. To me, this was a film where the series really found its footing. The first two films were kind of shaky. You had four and then you had three and those were the first two films. And then the third one comes out out, which is Pirates of the Caribbean 1. This one is just, you know, Jack Sparrow is on his game. Jeffrey Rush comes back as Hector Barbosa. Unfortunately, this one doesn't feature Orlando Bloom or Kiara Knightley, which is very sad because they're just, they're such great characters and such a big part of the storyline. So it's really hard to watch the film without them being there. This is the film where Jack Sparrow is looking for the trident of Podison or P Jack Sp Jeff Septicai. Pirates of the Caribbean 4 is Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man Tell No Tales. This film is weak. It's cowardly. In this film, Jack Sparrow sells his soul to Davy Jones. Um, what the heck? Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. This is the fifth one, the final release in the franchise, and it's by far the best one. This film has everything. It has the entire cast. They're all here. Penelope Cruz. Javier Bardem. Yeah, the whole cast. Jeffrey Rush is not in this film as Hector Barbosa, except for the vast majority of the film in which he is here. He's just not here at the very end, which is kind of when you really want to see him. It's just so beautiful. I love this film. I want to kiss it. The soundtrack of this film is amazing. All the other ones have terrible soundtracks. Just this one is good. My favorite, in my opinion, and in your opinion as well. Truthfully, this is just such a great way to finish the series, and I can't wait for Pirates of the Caribbean 6. Please release us a sixth one. I don't care if I'm just watching a barrel float in the ocean for two and a half hours. I'm gonna see Pirates of the Caribbean 6, okay? This movie is beautiful. One star out of five. The official ranking, and I know what you're thinking. Brandon, how can you rank these films when they're all so good? When they're all the best film that's ever been made? It's impossible, but I can do it. A lot of people will tell you that Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl is the best one. They're incorrect. Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest is the best Pirates of the Caribbean video. Even if you watch it in the complete wrong order and you didn't pay attention the whole time and you have the stories all mixed up in your head, this is still the best one. People then try to say Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End is terrible, which they're wrong about that. People are like, oh, the plot's so complicated. I don't understand what's happening. That's because you're stupid and you're dumb and you're just not 
not smart. You're not capable of keeping up with thoughts and thinking. It's very simple. Jack Sparrow betrays Will Turner because Will Turner is trying to betray Elizabeth Swan, who is Pirate King, who is trying to betray Jack Sparrow, who's trying to betray Hector Jones Barbosa. Locker, because and Hector bring him Barbosa back from the dead Pearl, which just so that they can betray him some Hector more and send so him Barbosa back. And Jack Sparrow Meanwhile, Will against Turner each other is while working together because they're both trying to get the same trading boat. Company. Jack Sparrow has control of Davy Jones and, and his minions. minions. Pirates, Pirates while they're off the train. He leads Will Turner to them so that Will Turner can then do something of his own. Jack Sparrow works with the Eastern Union Company to betray everybody except Jack Sparrow because my plan is in the long run and there's a huge bunch of people. It's not that complicated. I don't see what the problem is. It is genuinely hard to rank these. Don't even know how you can rank these films when they're all perfect, but Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Man's Chest is the best, followed by The Curse of the Black Pearl. Then we have At World's End in number three, Dead Man Tell No Tales number four, and lastly is On Stranger Tides. I have to put On Stranger Tides in last just because there's no tie-in to any of the rest of these movies here. It's just that Jack Sparrow from all of these movies is in this movie. We have film perfection, and this is what it looks like. This is what... This is what film perfection looks like. Everybody take note. Make your movies to this standard because this is greatness. This is art. This is culture. This is everything. This is my life. I breathe Pirates of the Caribbean. I speak Pirates of the Caribbean. I eat Pirates of the Caribbean. I just like the blooper reels. If you watched this video, please consider subscribing. I mean, you watched this video after all. You, you kind of owe it to me at this point. <laughs> According to YouTube statistics, some people aren't subscribed to me yet. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed to me, you should definitely should. Watch another YouTube video. It doesn't have to be one of mine. Just, I mean, you know, keep on watching videos. It's really fun. Arg. <laughs> Ba 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 